There we hey, go. There okay. it looks so mighty right. All right, ready? 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 All right. What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're breaking down a badass movie. I know a lot of you guys are youngsters. You're trying to get into the military. You probably haven't seen it. We are watching The Rock. I'm going to be honest with you. We rewatched it last night so we can get our notes for the talking points. And damn, this movie was just as good as I remember. And that almost never happens. Usually you go back and rewatch these movies and you're like, ugh, you like this? What the fuck? But not this one, dude. This was sick. But that doesn't mean it's not without some questions. Now that I have some tactical experience, which I did not have when I saw it the first time, I have some serious questions about this movie. So let's jump in and let's talk about The Rock. Fuck yeah. Pew. Pause. Time out. Pause. Have a question. What the fuck Batman universe are they living in when they just shoot fucking spears? Nobody hears that thing smashing into some concrete. And then it's strong enough to hold a bunch of grown ass men zip lining across the line. Have you ever shot a spear? No, nobody does that shit. That's the dumbest fucking thing. They literally took that from Batman. Could you imagine the amount of like penetration that that would have in order? <laughs> The penetration that that would have to have in order to maintain your weight. And then it, the, the line would have to be taut enough to, and then at a high enough angle. So now what are you attaching your gun to, to have that super taut line? You know, what are you attaching the other end to? It's just coming from a fucking little launcher. What are you attaching the launcher to, to make it so tight that you could fucking zip line across it? That's true. As yeah. a 200 plus pound male with kids. How calm are you? How trained are you? I'd be freaking the fuck out. Like, if I was the other guy that had it on my suit, I would be doing the, like, cartoon scream run in circles around the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and I would just be saying, let me out! <laughs> Waiting for the door to open so I could run away as fast as I can. I don't. Dude, I, you've got a gas that's eating through your suit. And he's just like, it's eating through my suit. And they're like, stab yourself in the heart. Like, fuck you. I'm not, I can't. I can't. You know what? Like, ah! Even if I could, like, get to the point to do the injection and, like, I'm probably going to. The injection has a plunger and you still have to push it. So you have to stab yourself in the heart and then remain calm, cool, and collected enough to sit there and just push that plunger into your heart. Have you ever had, like, a protocol that you know of that where they told you, hey, you might have to stab yourself in the heart? Fuck no. No? <laughs> Fuck no. They know damn well I'm not going to stab myself in my heart. And I would tell them right then and there, like, you're fucking high. I'm not stabbing myself in my heart. Like, why don't you just be like, hey, man, take the fucking thing and stick him in the heart so I could be like, uh, uh. <laughs> And then you would cry about it, but you would be s s alive. You can't back out because I would still hit the plunger for you. Mm -hmm. Why would I stab myself? There's two guys in there. With two fucking needles. Yeah. Okay. Who doesn't, who doesn't want to get stabbed by two guys? <laughs> the fuck? But you can never again set foot on your native soil. We're just going. <laughs> yes, sir! All right. We'll just move on from that, I guess. <laughs> Oh, that guy. I have choked on these lies my entire career. Well, here and now, the lies stop. Dude, he's so good. Fucking kills it, man. Look at his fucking serious face. She's like, God be with all of you. Man, your positions, man. All right, so in this scene, he tells um, the guys that are all going to be a part of this operation that they are going to be given $1 million and they're all going to have to go to a non extradition country to live out the rest of their lives, they're basically done. Like, as you guys are, you're you're never going to be able to come back to the U.S. So my question is, would you ever even consider that? Let's be fair and talk about what a million dollars was that year. 
as opposed to 2022. Yeah, because like, now that I would be like... That's like a full tank of gas at this point. So. Yeah, no, I would be calling them in like six months be like, I need more money. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, you're killing innocent civilians. So in his, already, you're not selling me on this. I don't care what your ideals are. The minute you involve innocent civilians, I'm fucking out. Um, but then second, to go to a non-extraditable country and live there... It's not like you're just fucking kicking it with freedom to roam. Look at that guy that runs WikiLeaks, right? Assange. Assange? Yeah. Like, he's, like, held up in, like, a house, right? No, I wouldn't do it. Non-extraditable country hiding out like a little bitch for the rest of your life? That would suck. These men died for their country, and they weren't even given a goddamn military burial. So the one issue that I have with the scenes, like, I love his passion and that he's about his men, and it's so awesome. But the one, a little bit of a contradiction to that is just right before this scene, when he's trying to uh, take the nuclear weapons, one of his guys is stuck in the room and he shuts the door on him. He commands him to shut the door on him. His guy's just like begging for his life. He shuts the door on him and he melts alive and then just fucking walks away like, peace. So for your mission, it's okay for your guys to just die and... You know, you could just walk away because mission comes first. When it's the U.S. US doing it, it's an issue, and they should be given awards and compensation and all this stuff. Rightfully so, but just, I don't know, there seems to be a bit of a contradiction. And maybe that could be explained, but not really well. Sean Connery, man. Sean Connery. Some hitters in this movie, dude. Oh. No. Look, they just fucking made him look like such a badass, too. Yeah. Need plane. Need plane. <laughs> fucking nerd. Gosh, damn, dude. He's terrible in this movie. Um, Sean Connery's character in this movie is a British SAS uh, or former British SAS operative. What do you know about SAS and, and how seriously should they be taking him in this movie? So if they're going to pick anybody, I mean, SAS is definitely a good one to pick. They're like elite British tier one unit. They're what the CAG is based off, our tier one unit. So Green Beret went and trained with SAS and then was like, fuck, we need one of these. And then came back and started Delta, uh, CAG, whatever you know it as, small <laughs> missions unit, whatever, SMU. Where's Kurt, special when, you, mission where's Kurt when you need him? <laughs> Well, what does he say? Like he would confirm or not confirm oh, everything know. you were asking me right now. I know. Because, I, dude, Damn I, don't, it, Kurt. I, like, I, don't, I don't like fucking hyper-focus on all this stuff. So when people ask me these things, I'm like, man, I think it's this. Like, as things that people just talk about when you're in special operations, like they're mm -hmm. normal things. I just say it. Like, but I don't, like, go on the internet and, like, this is what it is. And, like, blah, jerk off the fucking... <laughs> The only thing is, like, he's been in jail for, what did it say, like, 30 years? Nobody's, I don't care what you did. If you sit in jail for 30 years, like, you don't got skills for shit. I don't care how fucking efficient you were 30 years ago. You've been sitting in jail, like. Your muscles are, like, atrophied. Yeah. Like, I don't, <laughs> it's like, take Rich Froning <laughs> and then be like, 30 years ago, you were a CrossFit <laughs> Games champion. He's like, I've been in fucking jail for 30 years. I'm like, yeah. all right, well, you're going to compete at the CrossFit game. Run this son of a bitch, you hear me? All right, so you've had a lot of experiences with Matt V's. Can they go over normal cars like a bug and, and economy cars like that? A uh, Matt V, 100%. Yeah, a Matt V will jump right over that bitch. What about a Humvee? Because a Matt V is based to protect you from IEDs. It's got a V-shaped hole. They made it way more off the ground. And the whole point is if an IED explodes, then you could survive. So it's way lifted up. Uh, a Humvee is not going over a vehicle. A Humvee is just like... Uh, a really well protected truck. I mean, you guys have all seen it. The uh, Humvees driving around the streets in in the, the states, they're gonna smash something out of the way, but not go over. They don't. They just don't have the ground clearance to be jumping over vehicles. Tell me about the tunnels. If you know the system, 
All right, so you see the grids they have up in that room? Yeah. Have you guys ever used that type of setup to hone in on any type of a mission or anything? No. No? <laughs> no. You guys have never had clear plexiglass clear with tons of crossbars grids? and just no. a straight up grid? No. If you draw a map, <laughs> if you draw a map for one side and you're like, well, we need it clear so you could see it on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you know about maps, but when you flip them over, they don't make a lot of sense. So I don't understand what the whole clear glass grid fucking coordinate thing is. It looks cool, though. An incursion underwater to retake an impregnable fortress held by an elite team of U.S. Marines in possession of 81 hostages and 15 guided rockets armed with VX poison gas. <laughs> poison gas. <laughs> How many times do you think he had to say that to oh, get it right on camera? A hundred. That's why he emphasized gas, because he was like, fuck yeah, I got it. This is going nowhere, Frank. Well, let, let me tell you what is. 15 mm. VX gas rockets near the heart of San Francisco. You've got 17 hours to deliver the money. Be prepared to reap the whirlwind, gentlemen. Well, how are you going to deal with this issue? Dude, honestly, I think they nailed that. It's like, you don't always have to be the one with the answers. So if you don't know something, ask somebody who does. And I think that's where they get this really well in this movie. Is like, we need to get onto this island. Who knows how to get onto this island better than anyone? The guy that escaped from the island. Let's ask him. I don't think I would go and let him out of jail and let him fucking run havoc all over the city, destroying things and trying to kill people just to see his daughter. But I would just <laughs> ask him, hey, man, what did you do? What is the best route? Do you have any intel for us that we could use? And then if he gave us something, cool, we'll use it and try to formulate a plan. But the best thing you could do is not be the guy with all the answers. I would try to put together a team of intelligent people that I trusted and be like, come on, guys, let's have a think tank and let's figure this out. Calvary. Make no mistake, gentlemen. Um, obviously, we saw all the we saw the big wigs all in the fun shots. But are tiger stripes something that you guys do normally as camo? So think about this with camo. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I know the pattern you should use. The terrain is going to dictate the pattern. So the reason I say stop at this, which is like 59, 59, is that you get a shot of all of them. Mm -hmm. And just look across from, whoa, you knew that was happening. What was happening? The drop? What are we doing right now? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> the whole point is that your face, especially clean shaven, is just a giant human face. Like it's so identifiable. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of the camo is that it breaks up the lines of your face because humans are just inapt to, to see are other people's faces in other terrain. Right. So depending on the terrain that you're in, uh, whether it's woods, you want to use the camo to change the shape of your face. So where if somebody looks throughout uh, like a quick glance of the woods, your face isn't just going to pop out like Sean Connery's or his or uh, Nicholas Cage's right now. Gotcha. But yeah. what you do with that fucking paint is up to you. No one's going to tell you how to do it, but whether what makes a good face paint or a bad face paint is how much you are recognizable as a human being from mm -hmm. a quick glance. What kind of, I've never, that helicopter is crazy looking. I wonder what that is. Dude, it's all about that, uh, that music. The music is so bomb in this movie. Uh -huh. When have you been on a chopper? Uh, training, transportation, stuff like that. We every time we did infills, I like I've done chopper infills in Afghanistan, but it's not like so. Yeah, I've done chopper infills into an operation, but it's not like some of my friends. Like my team, for most of our all of our missions, really, we chose to drive our map fees. We chose to get in a convoy and drive there. So we have heavy guns, we have water, just different missions, right? Mm -hmm. But I have a buddy uh, and his team. He was the captain of the team. And his team did chopper infills to every fucking mission. Um, so they did that shit a lot. So when you think like choppering in and getting dropped off on the X, they're hitting the X and then they're trying to get the back to the chopper. It's a different info platform that we just didn't decide to use based on where we were, where our targets were in the missions. Mm. Okay. So you've never been in this situation where you're basically flying in a chopper 
um, anticipating getting to your target and just being nervous no. inside of an aircraft. No, not an aircraft. I've been in the back of a Mat V waiting to get out, knowing that I was going to start shooting as soon as I got Which out. Which is easily just as bad, if not worse. Yeah. Because you're already there. There's, yeah. You're not even in the air. So. I would say that the, the chopper's arguably a little worse because it's like you're a floating fucking target until the minute you could actually get out and start shooting back. I feel like you told me a story about like when you first went and you were flying in to um, Afghanistan. That was. So the, my first time going into Afghanistan... We were flying in. The chopper was coming down. We were about to l land at the FOB, and then we saw a big pop. All the lights cut out, and then we saw, like, big explosions underneath us, and then the chopper started banking and started dropping heavy, and I was like, holy shit. Uh, and then I got out, and I was, like, you know, a young guy, and I was like, did we just get fucking shot at? And they're like, ha, ha, no, you're an idiot. And I was like, shit was exploding, and then the chopper was banking. And what the fuck was that? And they're like, I don't know, popping flares. And I was like, it wasn't a fucking flare. It was a bright white light explosion. And the chopper banked and started <laughs> fucking dropping. And everyone on the fucking chopper with me was like freaking the fuck out because we dropped so fast. Mm. And we all saw the explosion. So we thought we got shot at by an RPG. But who knows? The, I don't think the pilot's going to come out and be like, hey, guys, welcome to the ground. We just got shot at. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the experience, you know? Yeah, that's but it. that was as regular army. So like, if I was SF at the time, I would have been like, "Hey, motherfucker, what just happened?" And I could actually ask him. Mm -hmm. But I was fucking regular army guy. I was just along for the ride, so I can't just be like, "Hey, guys, what? <laughs> can, can you please brief me on what's going on?" I never tell that story because to this day, I don't know if I was right or not. Like the the sergeant that picked me up was like, "The fuck you talking about? No one shot at you." <laughs> But then me and everyone on that fucking bird were like, we just got fucking shot at. <laughs> that shit was crazy. So I was just like, well, whatever. That story goes to the fucking wayside because I can't prove or disprove what the fuck happened. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Shit was scary as fuck, though. The whole of this side of the plane, because you have the little windows. The whole of this side of the plane goes, poof, white light. And it goes, bank, drop. Woo. And I was like, <laughs> and I look across, and there's, a, there's another soldier next to me, and there was a female, and she was like, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> we get to the ground, and they just fucking, we just get off, and we're like, I was like, did we just get fucking shot at? She's like, I think so. And then there was a couple other people who were like, what the fuck? And then everyone was just like, hey, guys, welcome to Afghanistan. They were like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> All right, so I don't um, think those are MP5s multiple actually. times in this movie they say stand fast. What does that mean? Stand fast, hold still, don't move, wait one. Has anybody ever told you to stand fast? No, but if someone was like stand fast, I'd be like, all right, I'm waiting. <laughs> I wouldn't feel weird if they said it. They're like, hey man, stand fast. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll just wait. <laughs> okay, you could have just said wait, but that's fine. <laughs> you wanted to say stand fast. That made you feel more tactical, so we'll just roll with that. At what point in the history of the world have you had operations consisting of, I guess, gas inside of, like, little balls? It just looks like they copied ooze from Ninja Turtles. <laughs> 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 Fucking Shredder's going to punch out of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Handle me, I'll just wipe out you and me. Oh, it's a cold enough to raise inhibitor. Stops the brain from sending nerve messages down the spinal cord within 30 seconds. Any epidermal exposure or inhalation, and you'll know. Twinge at the small of your back as the poison seizes your nervous system. Do not move that. <laughs> Bitch, you just moved you just it, handed to him. it to him. I was yelling, like, don't fucking yell at me, motherfucker, while I'm holding a fucking bomb that could kill this whole It's a very stressful situation. You can't yell at people. I know. I'll have that sidearm, sir. You need this sidearm. Ooh. Why does the movies they always think that the your your gun makes clicking noises when you raise it? It's like the, what's clicking? Why is it clicking? I don't, I don't know. There's no clicking. When I, I raise my gun, it just raises. It but doesn't... I assume now if I if I have a gun and I go like this, it's gonna go <laughs> without me doing anything. And if you have multiple, it's just like <laughs> <laughs> <And they> go... <laughs> all right, guys. So there it was the rock. Great movie. I say that we stay in the 90s movies for a little while. Don't worry. We're going to cover all the major military movies. So 13 Hours, uh, Lone Survivor, we're going to get to all of them. So trust me, when you guys leave your comments, we are taking notes and we're going to cover them. But 
we just wanted to jump into some of our favorites from our childhood, and this is one of them, The Rock. Badass movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's worth the watch. We promise you. We'll see you on the next one. And fade out.